Hello everyone, and welcome to session zero of the Wrath and Glory game, The Depths of Trollius. We are using the latest update to the Wrath and Glory rules as was recently put out by Cubicle 7. As such, there may be some rules that are different to those that were used in the old Ulysses Spiel version. I myself am relearning the rules as we go, so expect us to look up a few things during play and to get some things wrong. Uh, if all goes well, uh, and you're seeing this, this will be a weekly stream at 9 p.m. Eastern, or GMT-4, on Fridays. Uh, we will be streamed on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv E-L-H-M-K-1. Make sure to swing by and say hello. And with that, we're just going to go ahead and have everyone uh, do a quick introduction of themselves. And let's start with uh, Mr. Harad. Uh, hello. Uh, I am playing Brother Harad, a uh, Primaris uh, Marine for the Dark Angels. Um, I, uh, my name is George, um, uh, and my Twitter is at Strom12341. Um, there's not much to me. Well, you'll get to know me over this stream, I, uh, I imagine. Gotcha. I'll have to fix the overlay later because I've got your old tag on there, but uh, I'll fix that later. Uh, up next is uh, Kranz. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric. Uh, Eric Volgaris everywhere, and I'm playing uh, Rosen Kranz. Uh, she is a sister of Battle of the Order of the Martyred Lady. Um, you can find me everywhere at Eric Volgaris. All right. Up next, we have Torvan Volksgard. Hey, everyone. My name is Ben. I'm going to be playing Torvian Volksgard, who is a slightly beaten and battered imperial guardsman he's gone through some nonsense in his life and is currently basically enslaved to veronius so that'll be fun oh yeah up next is jocta hey my name is uh william i'll be playing jocta the hive ganger uh he is uh effectively somewhat of a street samurai heavily heavily modified uh who has somehow found his way into the uh graces good or otherwise uh of this uh rogue trader very nice and certainly last but not least uh corporal shank hello i'm Kess, and i will play in corporal shank an imperial stormtrooper who's been working for our rogue trader for some time uh i don't have a twitter i don't have a facebook so you'll get to know me through the stream very nice and with that let's run our quick introduction Welcome back. As I said, short introduction. So let's go ahead and bring it on in and I'll start the opening monologue. So as all Warhammer content begins, we begin this very same way. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. The worlds of the Gilead system have stood for a millennia as a beacon of imperial order located near the border of the Segmentum Solar and the Segmentum Obscurus. Until the dawn of the Dark Imperium, these worlds thrived and prospered. The Gilead system was considered a gleaming example of the Imperium's majesty and righteousness. However, the loss of the Emperor's light that came with the expansion of the Great Rift has left the region without communication, transport, or backup these past three years. Enter the world of Trollius. The planet was vomited forth by the Great Rift into the gravity well of the Gilead Star recently, along with one other. The world of Trollius is a dead hive world that has been locked in ice. The great spires that once housed billions stand frozen and silent. The dense ice that covers the hives resists all but the strongest and most advanced aspect scans. Those picked returns that are successful show the shadow shapes of hive dwellers fleeing in terror from some unseen horror moments before they were frozen in place. And if that wasn't bad enough, the craft world of Ulkari lays broken and dying on the world. To put it in succinct terms, Trollius is a font of mystery and intrigue, though not without immense risk, and that is where you, my players, come in. Rogue trader Jekyll Veronius, the man at the head of the most powerful vessel in the Gilead system, 
has assembled several exploration teams composed of individuals from all walks of life. Their goal is to delve into these frozen hives of Trollius in the search of answers and untold treasures. You are all on one such team, specifically assigned to the Hive of Borak, B-O-R-R-A-C. You have never met your fellow team members prior to this moment, which means that the dropship ride so far has been awkward, to say the least. And that is going to be our very first scene, where we cut the interior of the dropship, where you guys are situated in such a way that you maybe are, you know, avoiding each other's glances, you know, you're just sort of, you know, trying to find anywhere but each other to look at, you know, standard, awkward, I don't know you, I'm not comfortable with, with you type manners. Um, but I thought we would take this opportunity not only to introduce our characters, but also maybe to get some role play going. Uh, so let's start with the left side and work our way to the right. So tell us a little bit about uh, what Brother Harad looks like from a uh, perspective. Of course. <clears throat> so um, the first thing that anyone on the team would notice about Brother Harad is that uh, he's quite large, being uh, a Primaris Marine, and that he is, in fact, not wearing uh, power armor. In fact, it doesn't appear that Brother Harad is wearing armor at all. Um, he is wearing a, uh, a body glove and a large cloak that covers most of him. Uh, if, if for anyone who's never seen uh, an Astartes before, they would probably just assume he was a, a large Ogryn or even a combat servitor. <clears throat> All righty. Sister Kratz, what do you look like? Well, uh, I guess I'm a little bit uh, surprised. Yeah, so Sister Kratz has uh, blonde hair, um, wearing the classic black of anyone who's a, of the martyred Saint Catherine. Uh, as well as wearing the classic um, Adeptus Sororitas power armor. Um, I think in her hands will probably be sort of like that rosary um, that she's praying to. And she's probably doing like the, the classic litany of like the Odominus, blah, 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 uh, kind of prayer. Uh, particularly um, because we're nervous here, probably pretty, pretty loud. Uh, I'm not like whispering it, uh, you know. Um, and who would ever have a problem with somebody praying to our emperor? All right. And then we have Corporal Shank. Well, Corporal Shank is a rather standard looking human being. Not overly tall, not overly short. Bald head. Small scar running from his cheek down to his chin. Uh, icy blue eyes. And is currently just checking his equipment. His armor is unadorned. There's no colors, no regimental colors. It seems battered, a few scrapes, that's about it. All right. Uh, Torbian, what do you got going on? Well, Torbian is very nondescript as far as humans goes. He's in reasonable shape. Obviously, he's seen action. He's wearing standard set of flak armor. He's got himself a combat shotgun and a med kit. And he's reading through his Imperial Guardsman's Uplifting Primer. Very nice. And then last but not least, Jokta, what do you look like? Jokta is probably the least normal looking, aside from maybe Harad in here. Uh, he is very obviously aug uh, augmented. Um, his legs do not appear in any way, shape, or form to be subtle by any stretch of the imagination. Um, both of his arms uh, seem a little more like someone put a little more effort into making them appear <clears throat> like the originals. Uh, he also appears to have uh, mechanical eyes where his uh, biological ones once uh, rested. Uh, he is clothed in a makeshift patchwork of various rags of uh, articles of clothing that don't seem like they actually originally ever intended to go together, but uh, it was the whatever was available type uh, situation. Uh, and for the most part, he seems to be sizing everyone up in this shuttle. Gotcha. As you all 
you know, look at each other, he, you know, basically understand all of this in character. Uh, the pilot of the Aquila Lander sort of shouts back, hey, you guys got about uh, 20 minutes before we uh, have anything exciting going on outside. Uh, please feel free to, God, say anything. It's ungodly quiet back there. Uh, no offense, sister. None taken. I interrupt my prayer. <laughs> I was just finishing up anyways. I'm fairly sure he meant unemperorly silent back here. <laughs> <laughs> so, sister, what were you praying for? What else? What, what do you think I would be praying for? Safe oh, safety? And courage. Fair enough, sister. I'll lean back in my chair, check my knife. Make sure it's sharp enough. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, Kessar, I think there's a point where I say courage. Uh, if you don't mind, um, and you know, tell, tell me if it's not. But it's, I think I think when you say courage, I think you realize courage, and you're not sure if that's because of whatever's going to be off the ship, or courage to have to kill you all in the name of the emperor. Uh, if worse comes to it, and it's a little bit unnerving. Uh, Whatever the emperor requires. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and like, so when I say courage, it's that's kind of what I meant, and you definitely pick up on it, right? There seems yep, to be definitely. no lack of courage in this lander. Yeah. I wouldn't consider myself a brave man, but I do what needs to be done. Service is its own reward. Praise the Emperor. I look over to the space ring. All that one of you be found without your armor. Not many know of the Astartes. Not one could not many could pick one of us out. You're very well informed. Well, perhaps I am. Have you served with a leg uh, one of the chapters before? No, I didn't serve. I observed. I'm surprised you're still here. There must have been quite the battle then. It was. Well, I'm glad that you're on this team. That means I can put my, my faith in you. Good to know. Yeah. And not to interrupt, me. but can I get a toughness DN1 from everybody? All right. Well, that's already a uh, resounding success from, Miss, from Brother. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of successes. Let's see. Is that toughness, right? Yep. Oh. Let's see if I did that right. Uh, I think we gained a glory from me rolling a six on the wrath die. I Apparently actually I did think not you do that could... right. Looks like you can actually uh, shift two. Yeah, right. so you actually could get two glory from that. Yeah, let's go ahead and get two glory for the team. Uh, right. I think you can only shift one glory per test. That might be a new rule because it used to be you could shift everything. I think um, you can shift more than one as long as you still. Uh, you, so still you can you can pass. you can shift them to the result, but you can only, I think you can only shift one for glory itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Right. Um, but he because he got it on the wrath yeah. die, um, he automatically gets the one glory, and then he has the other that rolled a six. Right. Again, this is why we're doing test rolls, because we want to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so obviously I did something incorrect here. How do yeah, I... so let's, let's delve into what you're doing. So on your character sheet, uh, what you want to do is literally click the toughness roll, and the sheet uh, should handle everything for you. Oh, well, that's... The little die button in. on the far right. I see of like, okay. There we go. All right. So hey, look, that's that's another. You're glory rewarded. For you. The emperor blesses you for yeah. using the uh, yeah the roll template. Good job. There you go. So uh, I believe that brings you guys to four glory overall. Actually, so uh, the way we're gonna try keeping it um, is we're gonna do decks with uh, cards. So if one or more people want to keep track of the total glory, uh, you know, feel free to mediate amongst themselves. But the reason for this task is because there is a sudden drop in altitude as the Aquila Lander sort of jostles and buckles for a bit. And because you all succeeded, you know, you just sort of hold in your seats. Uh, you don't get flung out onto the floor or anything. 
but the uh, pilot calls back. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, had a little bit of turbulence. Uh, man, this uh, this hive is. Uh, ooh, uh, may- maybe you should uh, look out your window to your left, and you'll see what I mean. Turbulence in space. I'm sure we're in the upper atmosphere at this point. Yeah, at this point, you're going through the upper atmosphere. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Rosen will definitely peek out the window, the nearest like port window, if possible. Sure. Yeah, as will Brother Hrod. Assuming right. it's the left one, right? Like, I'm yeah, we'll, we'll say it's the saying. port side window. So I will put you on this map so you can kind of see what the hive looks like from the exterior. Yeah. So what you're seeing is the standard sort of hive where it is this massive city, this amalgamation of buildings and skyscrapers and spires that is built up upon itself in layers. And it is surrounded by a massive wall, easily 10 stories tall, and a deep trench in between the exterior and interior of that wall. Um, but what you're noticing without any tests involved is that there appears to be sort of this dark malaise, this dark aura that hangs like a cloud over the upper spires. And you are still a good few clicks away from the hive, but you're already noticing that even this far out, that that cloud has extended. There's nothing good good. in that cloud. Looks like we're going to need that courage. So where is the cloud extending from? So the cloud appears to be extending from the spire itself, the the highest spire in the hive. Mm. And because I forgot that we might have audio listeners, uh, if you can't see the screen, imagine a frozen ice world that has this hive situated upon it. Uh, There is heavy snowfall and heavy wind. That is probably also why the, you know, lander is bouncing around a bit. Um, but this dark cloud that hangs over everything. Um, I tell you what, let's make it a roll. Go ahead and roll me a awareness, please. Difficulty of two. Oh, that is another uh, four successes. And if you wanted, you could shift that six for another point of glory. We max out of what? Six glory? Let's, I let's believe max so, out. yes. Yeah, it's six glory. Actually, um, I'm going to shift it for more information. Okay. All right. So what you see, uh, what Harad and Torvian see, uh, is that probably more Brother Harad more than Torvian, but you both come to the same conclusion. It's almost as if there is an atmospheric condenser that is spewing out this dark matter, this dark light, this dark cloud uh, that's coming from the upper spire. But as far as you know, even in a world like this, there shouldn't be such a thing in the spire. Like, normally hive worlds don't really concern themselves with messing with the atmosphere. So the fact that there's such a device potentially there is perhaps a little bit flummoxing. Uh, Now your shift for additional information yields that the hive itself, it has a diameter of about eight clicks. So rough estimate, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think that puts the total square or total square kilometers somewhere on the 20, 30 mark. It's a huge hive is what I'm getting at. Uh, But that's what you get right now. And just covering the hive. Yes. It's a big cloud. I get the feeling that what we're looking for is in the highest room and the tallest tower. Indeed. And it's been working for some time, or it's working at an alarming rate to cover this much ground. Can I ask the pilot if he just senses any Vox transmissions coming from the hive? Yeah. So you ask, and uh, he reaches over and uh, begins turning the archaic knob on the Vox caster, and you hear bits of static and bits of, you know, random noises as one does when one is, you know, changing through Vox channels. 
Um, but there is one particular instance where I actually would like everybody to roll me a fear one test. As is that with conviction? That is with conviction, if I remember correctly. It's either willpower or conviction. I'm trying to remember. Uh, do, do, do fear is... Mentioned a lot in the book, so um, yeah, control F does not work. <laughs> fear, resist by resolve. Oh, well. oh, so resolve. Okay. Oh, which oh, is okay. conviction, I think, in this old sheet. No, oh, resolve is its own thing. thing. It's down near. It's right above influence. Uh, question. Yes. For you, I have fearless, which means I'm immune to. Fear fear and imitation, uh, intimidation interaction attacks. Does this mm -hmm. affect this roll at all for me? You're like, fine. Why can I you don't have to pass from it? Yeah. Let's see. It looks like uh, everybody has succeeded. Uh, am I missing anybody? No, I got everybody. So the reason for this fear test is because as he is switching through channels, there is in suddenly an unholy wail. Uh, almost like a banshee that has been mixed in through a synthesizer. So just imagine an unholy feminine shriek uh, that sort of reminds you of when a tech priest curses. Um, and it eats at the corners of your mind a little bit, but you're able to shake off the influence. The pilot himself quickly changes the channel and says, Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that coming from the planet itself. Yeah, uh, Elh, do we know if th we know this place is occupied at all at this point, or do we? This is you have no idea. Us, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, okay. Brother Ooh. Brother Harad will call over to the pilot and ask for an ETA on uh, landing. Well, uh, that depends where you want me to drop you off. Do you want me to drop you off uh, close as I can get to the upper spires? You want me to drop you off on the outskirts and? bring you in low or what's the call here get us closest to where that atmospheric disturbance is coming from yeah Imagine i'd rather that. fly than walk what what was it nine clicks eight mm -hmm. clicks so uh i'm gonna roll something for the pilot and i'm gonna do it the archaic way because i don't want to spoil his sheet and he does manage a few successes so you get closer and closer to this hive, Hive Borak. And as you get closer and closer, the turbulence grows more and more rough. And the pilot is really having to work the controls. And you are maybe about half a click out from the outer wall of the hive. When suddenly you all hear the unsettling sound of the engines begin to sputter and sort of catch on their blades. Uh, so let me ask this. Does anybody actually have a um, a tech skill that would apply here? Uh, I have tech use. That, yeah, that's that's what I would be looking for. I don't have any skill points in it, but mine's at three because of my intellect. Um, I've got a total of seven. I've got three tech and four intelligence. Well, it seems like you are the prime person for this roll, then. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a tech at three, difficulty of three. Come on. There we go. Wow. That is uh, seven twice, successes. Sorry. Yeah, we'll take the first one, right? Yeah, we'll take the first one. one. So, yeah, uh, you're already maxed on glory, so... It, I don't know what you really could shift with those uh, those extra glory if you really wanted to, but... Uh... If shift to know it faster. I'm going to shift to know it faster and shift to know more and shift to shove the pilot out the way and land. I don't know. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what is what was exactly going on that, like, yeah, that what does it look like? Right. So uh, with your training, Torvian, you actually maybe leap up to the cockpit and begin looking at the readouts. And what you see is that the compressor on the engine has been more or less clogged up. And it's having a difficult time keeping up with the speed of the craft. And with your shifts, I will say that you know two things. The first is that 
you're going down and there's nothing you can really do to stop it. But if you were to assist the pilot or someone was to assist the pilot, you might be able to turn it less into a crash than into a graceful landing, quote unquote. I'll work on that emergency landing. All righty. Uh, remind me, I believe there actually is a pilot skill, yes? There is. Uh, go ahead and roll me a um, pilot at, let's call this a three as well. Okay. Um, I don't actually have pilot trained, but... I've well, got... that's a good question. Does anybody have pilot trained? <laughs> I, have I have faith in the four? emperor. Can I roll that? <laughs> if you wish to offer a prayer. Uh, yeah, brother, if you want to come up and... Uh... You have four ranks in pilot? or you have No, four... I have it at four because of my agility. Okay, so... Yeah, he, he would be better for the role itself, but I don't think any of us have it actually trained. All right, so let's handle it a little bit in this role play. Cockpit. Yeah, I was going to say, so let's handle it a little bit in role play then. So the pilot's like, ah, I'm holding her best I can. Uh, we're, we're going down. Any, any of you got flight experience? Uh, I've ridden in a lot of planes. What do you need me to do? Uh, grab that stick there and just hold it far back as you can manage. All right. Um, should I do that as a pilot or as a strength check? Because if it's strength check, we're screwed. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> well, well, now that you've said it. Depends if the power steering's <laughs> out or not. Yeah, you're you're in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I imagine if the pilot is not having to go, <gasps> you Oh, no, he's, he's straining. Like, you can hear him, like, you know, trying his best to hold it as so the like entire an athletics craft is check, shaking. Then. Athletics, right? <laughs> I'll give you athletics. I'll give you athletics. Okay. But it's still difficulty three. And that is something I'd like to say. Oh, wow. Five, six. You guys are just <laughs> sixes, sixes, sixes. Apparently the emperor is uh, blessing you today. So good news. Uh, you are able to keep the stick back and keep the craft uh, relatively in a, how did Buzz, Light Buzz Lightyear put it? Falling with style. In such a way that as you, as the outer wall of the hive grows closer and closer and closer, you thankfully do not slam into the wall itself. You maybe soar over it, uh, maybe about 50 meters or so above it, so you come pretty damn close. Um, but the pilot angles you so that you don't start hitting the buildings, and you begin to descend, and because you succeeded so well... Um, there is a jolt as the craft hits the ground, but not in a way that would require a toughness test. So there is an ungodly screech of metal on ice as the craft kicks up all amounts of snow and ground and metal and comes to a screeching halt. And for sake of role play, I will put you yeah. on this map. And... For that purposes, I would love it if by the time it like ends up screeching and dying, you hear that I was like quietly praying again, like 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 super resolved, uh, resolute in myself, and then like and there were no no fear or whatever at the end, and um, like as soon as it like stops, can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, pilot in looks time. around and, well, uh, this isn't the upper spire, I promised, but uh, hey, we're here. You got us as close as we needed to, and, well, I had no intentions of leaving until this place is fixed. Any of you? Anybody else have warm weather gear, or am I the only one who remembered it? <laughs> I am a new. I have no need for such things. Fair I'm enough. pretty sure this carapace is an internal heating system. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Yes. Yeah. So the uh, the pilot begins know. to unbuckle himself, and he says, uh, all your gear should be in that uh, locker there in the back. And uh, when one of you goes to open the locker, uh, there actually is several things inside of it for each of you. Uh, so to start with, uh, I'm going to put this uh, available to players. So you should now see a handout, uh, what you recover from the crash. And this will change as the scene goes on. But right now, you each have three reloads. You each have cold weather gear that will let you ignore the harsh conditions while it is intact. And roleplay wise, uh, the pilot tries to go to the Voxcaster and, you know, start sending an SOS. And the Voxcaster just literally spits sparks and goes quiet. 
So you have a broken Vox unit if you want to take it with you. Is, I have a question. I can see what I can do to try to get that repaired. I'm assuming he's got some basic tools up in the cockpit. He does. Uh, but Harad, you had something. Is this three additional reloads on top of the three we start each session with? Yes. Or is it the three? Okay. So the, the thing about how we're going to proceed from here is that instead of getting new reloads every session, which is the classic Wrath and Glory thing, we are actually going to be sort of, cons you know, shoot straight, conserve your ammo, et cetera, et cetera. So it is something you want to track uh, on your sheet. That's why I figured that's why Love I'd it. ask. Cool. <clears throat> Great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brother Harad uh, walks into the cockpit and uh, looks at the two of them and says, the Emperor blesses us this day. What do you mean today? He always blesses us. Did you did you, did you not see? Uh, some days he blesses you a little more than others, I suppose. So I'm gonna do you want me to roll a tech check to see if I can fix the radio? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and roll me a uh, DN3 tech? We'll see what happens. Eh, See what you can successes. do about that radio. So I have good news and I have bad about news. These people. Oh, sorry, Krantz, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, it's like, see what you can do about that radio. I'm a little bit concerned if there's people here and uh, how faithful they will be. So I kind of like, you know, look out the windows and stuff, whatever we can. Okay. So uh, to do that tech test, uh, Torbian, you, again, good news, bad news. Good news, it is repairable. Bad news you're going to need components that aren't found on the craft. Let's say something very valuable and very, shall we say, tech priesty, quote unquote, uh, mm. is broken. So you are going to need to find basically new supplies to repair it. But with that many successes, it's easy for you to literally rip the unit out and take it with you. Um, Brother Harad. Actually, we ha have we actually introduced ourselves to each other? Do we know each other's names at this point? I would say you know, like, when you first got on the craft, like, maybe the pilot introduced each of you, but you maybe just know each other's names in passing. I'm sure it was on the dossier. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go up to the Astartes, Brother Harad, right? Would you mind carrying this? Uh, I'll... Uh, brother Harad will turn around and say, only other Astartes may call me brother. You just call me Harad. Absolutely, Harad. Would you mind carrying this? Still take it. All right. That's literally a load off my shoulders. Okay. I suppose we better get moving. Get out of this aircraft. All right. So towards the city, this is out of character uh, to the left or to the right on the map. I actually have a page prepared for this, so we will briefly look at the Hive map. So, uh, if you will direct your attention over here, you should see the crash site, and the scale is correct, so if you use the ruler tool, it should display the proper amount of distance. Like... All right, so it looks like we've got about four clicks mm -hmm. if we go as the crow flies, but dense packing is going to make that interesting. Is the pilot going to come, like, how's the pilot doing? Are they okay? Uh, the pilot's sort of, you know, at this point, you know, he's checked his craft, he hasn't started checking himself, and he looks down, and he says, uh, oh, uh, that's a problem. Uh, sister, you wouldn't happen to know of, uh, any medicine, would you? Or, I guess, really, any of you know any medicine? I'm, I, I, I'm, I used to study medicine before I got re re recruited, I think is the term they want us to use. Drafted. One well, of those um, things. any of you know, uh, what to do when your legs have been crushed so that you can't feel them anymore? You're uh, quite the Emperor's mercy. I might have something in my med kit here. 
let's see. What is your uh, what is your pool for your uh, Medicaid? Eight. An eight. Because I feel like being a little bit mean, let's do this at a difficulty of five. But I'm sure you'll still pass. Nope. Not quite. You can reroll. This does bring up an important thing. If you click that reroll button and spend a wrath to do so, it should automatically do it for you. Wait, I think um, you can spend glory for something like this to add. Spend glory. I can add a right? die with glory, I think. Yes. We're maxed out. And May as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do I do to add a glory roll? Now that I think you do have to roll manually. Yeah. Okay, so just... Slash roll I, think there's a, I think there's a spot for it on the sheet for it. For a modifier, yeah, I think. But that would, have, that would have me re-roll all the dice. Yeah, so in the future, if you want to buy additional dice, that's how you would do it. But since um, you know, we're learning the sheet... Well, if you look on the combat tab, there is an actual button for roll glory, and you can literally mark how much glory you want to spend. Oh. Okay, so I've just got to use... Awesome. Um, I think you can only use one glory per test, isn't it? As many you can as you use want. you can use as many as you want. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna roll a glory. Oh. Unfortunately, not enough. Uh. So uh, that comment about the emperor's mercy might come just, into play here. <laughs> might come to play because as you look at the pilot's legs, he ain't gonna walk again. And if you tried bringing him with you someone would basically have to either fireman carry him or otherwise strap him to his his or her back. And that might slow you down. So what you do with that information, I leave to you. I look over well, his shoulders. We've got plenty of straps. Him. And we can strap him to the back of the Astartes and have somebody watching the Astartes is six constantly. I look uh, over your shoulder while you're examining him. I just say, oh, no, he's dead. But, but but he's not. He's he's kind of breathing, sort of. Threw in a couple extra holes, but he's breathing. Unless any of you know how to fly, I wouldn't be quick to render judgment on this man. That's, yeah. Sound thinking in my thought. I agree. Yeah, Who's going to help me? I'll nothing. carry him. And, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll start doing it, even though I'm probably not the best one to do it. But, I mean, I got power armor. I'm pretty strong with it. So I, I sort of start lifting them up, and I'll just carry them. I'll assist That's you. I can, right we can do. both carry them between our, between our shoulders. How about you carry this box unit, and I will carry the pilot, since it only takes one of me. Perhaps that is Very most well. prudent. Okay. Um, first thing first, we need to get him out of this rubble. And my question is, uh, let me describe it a little bit more. So if you imagine the standard sort of pilot bucket seat uh, that has sort of a depression where the pedals are actually, you know, for aileron control or aileron control, however you actually say it, mm -hmm. um, that entire compartment has been smashed and crushed uh, such that his legs are trapped within. So my question is, how are you getting the pilot out? Empty. Like, are you going to take, like, a crowbar or a piece of metal and just wrench it open? Are you literally going to amputate and then cauterize? Like, how are you getting him out? Probably amputate and cauterize. I don't think any of us is going to be strong enough to undo that damage. Uh, it wouldn't be uh, so quick. To see. I think you need to have a little more faith here. <laughs> Rob might be, but he'd rather do the expedious thing, which is amputate and cauterize. I'm not simply pull him out. Because we're probably going to have to amputate anyways, otherwise gangrene. <laughs> well, let okay. me ask this well, let's then. Not, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's let's not quickly jump to amputate. Let's try to get this guy out. It wouldn't hurt to try to lift the thing off before you immediately go to his legs. He can't right? feel his legs anymore. Yeah, well, we, we can deal with that problem. Maybe there's a Medicaid somewhere in this city. Maybe yeah, that's a character, right? It's like perhaps there's a Medicaid somewhere here and one that's not fallen to whatever this malfeasance is in this air. Uh, quick. Uh, Private me, someone give me a crowbar. I'll pry this open. Brother Hobbs to step up and say, Private Torvian is a Medicaid. I have... I, I'm, I'm a field medic. I would not say I'm a fully trained Medicaid, but I'm a field medic. So I've seen this kind of injury before. Generally speaking, it's amputation. He is the leading expert at this very moment. I would follow his advice. Well, Kronz, do you still try to get him out, or...? 
Yeah, I'm still going to try to lift it up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to defy you all for a second. Not that I don't like you. Um, Fair enough. Say a little prayer. Part of me to do mercy here. Yeah, I'm saying, right? I, um, Emperor, give me strength here. And uh, is this going to be just a strictly strength roll? Or is I'll this give you like athletics. athletics. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, difficulty, um, so that you know before rolling, uh, the difficulty will be a four. So you may wish to spend some glory. All six, it's just roll all six. Um, my drill if you're spending glory to add dice, you have to add the dice after you do any rerolls. So Correct. you literally have to add the dice after you've made the roll. You can't do it simultaneously. Well, you can do it either way. Um, whichever way is good for you guys. Because mechanically on the sheet, it's one way or the other. But as far as the stream will see, it should be, it'll show one roll and then it'll show you your next roll. Again, it's whatever, you know, you can, you know, whatever yeah. is easiest for you. Um, cool. So then before I do it here, uh, I'm going to just kind of exposit for a second, uh, if you don't mind. Right. Like I, I just kind of mentioned that uh, my, my drill abbess is once at one time said that uh, never, never uh, jump to a permanent in, uh, solution uh, when there's still options around, and um, I'm gonna yeah I'm just gonna try to pry open the the console I guess uh, to try to lift him away, and you said that's athletics correct, cool um let's do it probably not great and there's a complication Ooh, that is a ruin yeah that's awesome that's perfect <laughs> uh, of course you, you kill him in the process maybe. I feel like I feel like there's probably like a sign of an impending threat coming, or something's worse, or or maybe the ship's yeah is is worse. Not maybe not him. I don't know. So let me like, ask this: think? Are you going to be spending glory to add a dice to this? Because you are not passing at the moment because it is difficulty no. of four. No, I love it. I love I love the idea that this fails or, or it makes it makes the situation worse, or like you know there's there's a looming threat nearby that like we we get at wind of or something or something you know like I don't care something like that. I'm with it. The ship is still closed, right? Yep. Like. Yeah, you have through. not opened the back yet. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps like I smell jet fuel. Hal comes through or something? Like, yeah, I don't know if you want suggestions. I actually have a good idea, and you're not going to like it, but I have an idea. Yeah. Bring it on me. Um, Let's do it. So, uh, Sister Krantz, as you try to get the pilot out, two things happen simultaneously. The first is that suddenly the bit of metal or the crowbar you're using to try and pry him out it slips and impales him in the gut. And he just goes, what the hell are you doing? Oh, what the hell is that? And you look out of the window and you see rising up from the ground, like from the ground and ice itself are these humanoid figures, maybe about six feet tall, two meters tall. Um, and they are emaciated. They are barely muscle on bone but there are about four or five of whatever the hell these things are rising up out of the ice and beginning to approach your craft and if that saying, wasn't bad enough you also smell jet fuel i'm just saying i think the emperor thought my plan was better right, i'm gonna without hesitation oh, slam open the uh, door and run out okay not, not following, following it so not in a you... cowardly way, right? When you say run out. Not in a cowardly way. <laughs> yeah. So when you uh, kick open the back door, uh, the immense cold hits you, but thanks to your cold weather gear, able to keep it at bay, and snow and wind begins to whip your hair and face about. And unfortunately, well, at least for you guys, uh, you see that now the back's open, there are two of whatever the hell these things are uh, creeping towards the back of the craft. All right, so real quick, before everybody piles out, I'm going to take a moment to look around, just a real quick search, mm -hmm. to try to find the pilot's sidearm, because I know he's got one. He does. Uh, go ahead and roll me, I would say this could be either investigation or awareness. Uh, let's call it a DN of uh, two. All right, I'm gonna do an awareness. And I would like it that it's it's not that I'm really messed up. It's more that the earthquake made it slip. Sure, right? like the shaking of it. No, you could tell yourself that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Uh, right, so. Three successes. So, uh, yeah, you do find the pilot's sidearm. It's nothing special. It is literally just a LAS pistol. Uh, but it does come with a reload. So you have a LAS pistol with a reload. Okay, so um, as far as the reloads go, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that the three that we start with and the three that we found match our respective weapons. Correct. And the one I just found is a LAS pistol style. Correct. All right. Cool. So I have six solid ammo and one for LAS. Can I yeah. try and recognize what's creeping for us? Um, see if we get some more detail. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at your character sheet and see what you've got going on. Uh, why don't you roll me a... Let's call this, uh... I guess I'm more in the front of the crap, so I'm kind of like up here. Let's do, uh, let's do investigation for this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, DN of three. Let's... Hold on. Can I make this as well since I ran out with him? Yeah, you certainly may. And, uh... Uh oh, oh dear, that's a that's a ruin. Brother Harald's gonna try and do it as well since he's in the cockpit. Okay, that's that's too ruin. I just okay. Apparently, the emperor is now very mad at you all. He really liked that pilot. <laughs> that how how did we manage to roll three? <laughs> Like four sixes wow. at the start, and then all it's like chaos party four ones. Yeah, okay, that's amazing. Okay, so I have so many dice. All right, here, here's how we're, what we're gonna flavor this as. So, brother Harad, you pile out. Jackta, you pile out. And then Shank, you pile out. All three of you look at the approaching things. And because you all, that's three ruin overall, I'm going to impose the fear condition on each of you. Rather than giving you a chance to test against it, I'm just going to say that you have fear for the moment. Because I think Not that's Rod probably is immune fair. To fear. Yeah, I believe I'm immune to fear for being a space queen. <laughs> then maybe immune. you're just a little unnerved. But everybody else, fear. Except for me, all I was doing was finding me a pistol. What is fear doing? <laughs> uh, so fear applies uh, two additional difficulty involving the fear source. So uh, if you were to shoot them, it is a two difficulty of higher. So if it was, say, for example, if it was a two to shoot them, it is now a four. Well, that's not good. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back up in the cockpit, uh, the pilot sort of does that thing where, you know, he touches his wound and, you know, blood on his fingers. And he, like, reaches up to the sister with a shaking hand and just touches her carapace and says, Tell my wife I always hated her. And then he goes limp. Uh, I don't know who his wife is, <laughs> Yeah, the pilot never introduced himself. You have no idea who this guy is. Uh, Thank you, dog tax. Well, my, my paths cross with her. I will. And I pull up my bolter and proceed to... Uh, I can't shoot through the glass of a pilot of a ship. Can I? That's not a, I would know that stuff pretty probably. Yeah. Not with a pistol, no. I have a, oh, I'm. this isn't a pistol. This is a bolt gun. Oh, this is the full-sized one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't fire that in a confined space. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be really loud. It's, 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 yeah, it's not just loud; it also explodes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, I if you want to like... shoot the window, I'm not gonna stop you. Well, the question would be like, do I? Does it shoot through? What I know of a bolt around going through a shuttlecraft's uh, windshield or not with a it's, shot? It's mass reactive, not, right? so as soon as it impacted the glass, it would detonate. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really dangerous. Why would you make a gun like that? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Kill things. Yeah, I thought I thought I would have to. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I won't do that. I'll proceed to move in the back. All right. And I'll probably I'll go five more and like I kind of like cut off as we see what's going on in the back, right? As I move back out to everyone. 
All right. So we are going to move into actual initiative order here. Now, unless they've changed anything, if I recall how it works is we basically bounce between player and enemy uh, pretty much at will. So if anyone wants to act first, they can. And then uh, we just bounce back and forth, letting whoever wants to go, go. So for the uh, party, who would like to act first? Uh, if no one has any suggestions, Brother Harald will like to charge. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah, see you in good. action. Great. Brother Harald will charge this one. So what's your moves? Uh, baseline humans are speed six, primary is speed seven. Yep. You're able to get to them, no problem. And in terms of charging, I'm just looking that up real quick. At those special gene weedies. I you. think charging is double your plus one dice. Mm -hmm. Plus one dice for my melee attack. Uh, is it in this neat little? Charge full move it's plus one dice. double speed medium minimum four meters gain plus one die. So I move five. Great. All right. And the good news is that the defense of these things is literally a one. So all you have to do is roll one success. Why do you got to tell me that? Now I'm not going <laughs> to... There you go. All right, uh, well, Brother Harad. Can... Would you like to shift? Well, I would love to shift. All right. Uh, uh, I will shift one of these sixes for glory. Okay. And one of these sixes for extra damage. Okay. Oh, you have a power sword? So, so like, these... we just see that come out? Whoa, yeah. awesome. Are these mobbed or are these not mobbed? These are not mobbed. Okay. And ooh, Demahe. So is this from, is this from, like, below your robes? Or yeah, basically. Like, like, from below your robes, like, there's this big, mm -hmm. like, dangling power sword that you sort of turn out and it activates, and, like, it's, like, one slash, like, as you pull it out, like, hitting this guy? Like, what does it look like? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's just a normal, uh, like you imagine a like a knight's broadsword, except sized for a twelve foot human. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like the size of my torso. <laughs> it's yeah. it's basically a six foot long blade. Um, but, you know, it's kept underneath the robes and in such a way where the hilt is actually uh, coming out of the bottom, and so it's easier to grab it from underneath the cloak and pull it out. Oh, cool! So it's like an underhanded, like up swing as you pull it out yeah uh should look cool yeah slicing it in half hopefully with all that extra dice wow I... wow Ooh, that's good. roll the extra damage right yeah, i believe it did yeah because it added four uh no i should have added one more but i think i took it away for i don't think it matters there's yeah. there's five that it added in there yeah it rolled but... five dice but you only got plus four on the damage Oh, okay. Yeah, that's correct then. Okay, I see what it's doing. Good it's news. It's three, so a total of 17. Yeah, the good <laughs> news, these things are not armored. So when you come up with your sword in that sort of uphanded swing, uh, not only do you bifurcate, trifurcate, quadrupate, you turn this thing into six distinct different pieces as the emaciated corpse falls to ruin around you. And I Sweet. shout, a hole. Right. All right. Uh, so I'll see if I can take a shot at the other one. So correct me if I'm wrong. In order to act next, you would have to spend, what is it, glory? Yes. I think yeah. it's glory. I think you spend. We'd have to steal glory the initiative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm totally okay with him spending glory to try and take his turn next. Go for it. Cool. Let's see if we can hit it. Uh, difficulty would be... It's For defense. you, it's three because you have that fear thing going on. Yeah. We'll see if I can get it. Well, apparently oh, the also... Emperor has returned. Yeah, oh, four I'll... successes. Or I'll am I looking shift. at the wrong thing? Uh... Oh, no, I'm still looking at Brother Harad. Go ahead. I yeah. just looked through the rules, uh, not to interrupt, but uh, apparently uh, Astartes are not immune to fear. Oh. Well, uh, you still rolled enough They shall know no fear, but not <laughs> no no fear. Yeah. 
Yeah, you you still rolled seven successes, so you're fine. Uh, I'll cu- I'll shift for extra damage, I suppose. And do I have enough to shift for glory to make up the one I've lost? Uh, you do. Hmm. Okay, we'll roll damage. Did you, did you roll? I don't see any. Uh, he's doing uh secret oh, rolls. Gotcha. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't see that. Uh, I'll take that off. Yeah, so it shows up on stream, but it doesn't show up on my Firefox window, so that's why I was bouncing back and forth, like, where is he rolling? I apologize. You're fine. Um, What was your total? Uh, Six, uh, he's got six. So I'll roll the damage. Okay, AP minus two, so let's go ahead and check out their character sheet. Uh, Yes, actually, that is enough to, well, hold on. Because they have that much resilience. It's that much. Okay. So, uh, when you shoot this thing with your hotshot las gun, the beam literally jolts between your gun and, let's say, the head. And the head, like, half of it burns away, but this thing is still advancing on you. No, oh, that ain't good. In character. (laughs) In character. (laughs) So we're going to have the one you shot move next. And checking its speed. Uh, Let me do some quick measurements here. Uh, Checked. I feel like picking on you, apparently. So it lunges forward in a surprising and unnerving bit of speed. And it's going to go ahead and attempt to attack you with its icy talons. Um, what was the range from where Shank was? Shank was the one who just fired, correct? Correct. Um, was that within short range? Because he should have gotten a extra damage die, I believe. Oh. Ooh. It's an extra attack die if it's within okay. short. Okay. I'll just roll a d6 if you need to. Yeah, go ahead and roll the d6, because it could matter here. Uh, is- because if it means he could push another die, then... Yeah, he can't push it, though, because that's only okay. four. Yeah. Does the last gun have rapid fire or something? Uh, Yes, the hotshot, I think, has rapid fire one. Okay. Okay. Cool. So within short distance, you should have gotten an additional die from that. Yeah, okay. exactly. So things to keep in mind. Again, that's why we're doing yes. this dry run to get all the kinks out. Yeah, I don't know the properties of, of all the guns, so that's I'm glad you do. Glad you can mm-hmm. keep us here and get, a, get us all the little advantages. All right, so, uh, yeah, this thing is going to lunge at you. Uh, Jacta, what is your defense? Two. Remind me, Ty goes to the attacker or the defender? I think uh, what, do you mean, what do you mean, Ty? If he rolls a two against the two defense, I believe... I think he still passes, yes? Yeah. You have to meet the yeah. target number. Just yeah. making sure, because I... Again, I run many systems, and some are meet or beat, some are meet, some are beat. So I want to make sure gotcha. I'm doing it correctly. Totally. Yeah, they bleed together, but this one... Just Did you to... only roll two? Yeah, I only rolled two. Okay. <laughs> uh, so let's see. In that case, I'm going to click this damage button. Uh, so it is doing a grand total of six damage with no armor piercing. So how is this thing attacking? Is it like biting me? Is it It is clawing literally me? taking its claws and just slashing at you in a cross formation. So he basically brings up one of his arms and it just sort of scratches against his metal bits and does nothing. Very nice. And of course, this thing doesn't have the presence of mind to be like, oh, I'm not doing any damage. So it's probably just going to keep wailing on you. Uh, but it is now the player's turn again. So I have Jacta, I have Torvian, I have Krantz. May I retaliate? You certainly may. Uh, so he is going to, with his one arm that he's still sort of fending this thing off with, he's going to, with the other, draw his uh, uh, hive ganger sword and sort of proceed to attempt to shank this thing in the torso. I love it. Now, remember, it is a difficulty three for you because you are fearful at the moment. And I believe there's no other attack modifiers, correct? Not that I'm aware of. 
All right, well, five successes means you can shift that one six for a point of glory or some additional damage, whichever you prefer. Uh, does this thing, this is the one that's got like the missing head? The half the missing head, correct. I'll shift it to glory. Okay. All right, 10 damage overall, very nice. So uh, you bring up your own sword and plunge it into the gut of this frozen zombie thing. And it doesn't actually spew blood or any sort of material when you stab it. It's slightly almost squishy as you're moving your sword around. It's, it's not a good feeling. Like there should be a sort of a visceral feel to tearing through something. This, it's almost like cutting through jello. It's, ugh. It's like I'm stabbing uh, a frozen turkey. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but you stabbing the, the news... viscera should feel visceral? No. <sighs> but the good news is it does sort of fall limp, impaled on your sword. Uh, get out of here. Yeah, considering this fuel leaking, I'm going to jog <laughs> that way. Um... <laughs> Now, I can still move, right? Correct. Okay, so he's going to basically, like, shove it out of the way. Oh, you uh, cut you out. You yourself. He either froze or... Sorry, I had a push a talk on, so there's not any background noise. He's going to step out and basically go to the side of the ship and sort of look around, and I'm assuming I'm going to notice these ones. Yeah, you notice the five approaching the craft from the front. And that will be his turn. Alrighty. Does anyone want to spend glory to uh, retain the initiative? Um, you're not able. We're not able to do that. Oh, we it's a one per. Glory. It's a one per round thing. Yes. Okay. Good to know. In that case, I have to let you go. Well, in other words, I, I don't think that it's once per round. I think that it's um, we have to let you get a turn in. We can only yeah. do two of two players in a row. We did. We did. That's well, that's why that's why I was confused. I was like. Hmm. The ice zombie just went and attacked Jocko, right? Mm -hmm. and then, well, then Jocko went, and now we have the opportunity. Okay, to do so it. yeah, we right. could. I'm sorry. I'm. I no, you're fine again. Working out the gotcha. kinks. <laughs> uh, I good. have yeah. uh, put all the glory uh, as little tokens, so we have full glory again. It okay. should be down next to the names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm nice. gonna put them up to the top. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Ah, not that corner. That's the one corner cut off by the stream. So picky. The fact that we move around so on many streams, maybe my idea for, for putting them on the screen may not be always useful. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, that's the, one, that's the one but, drawback uh, is that uh, yeah. it is hard like to keep a, them constant across screens. But Yeah, if there's a dashboard or something. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, but right. no, anyway. so do you want to uh, seize the initiative? Uh, Sister Krantz, no. if you want to seize it so you can run out. Yeah. Might be, no, might be uh, I was thinking about it but like um i think i think maybe this isn't really my turn when i say this to you torvian right but it's something like uh this place is going to blow perhaps we can blow it and kill the rest of them up there as we're kind of like walking out right or, or about to and but i don't think it's ready my ready to be my turn unless you're cool with me just burning a turn walking out of this thing and i might like shoot the ship my, my thought here is that i'm going to shoot the ship while they're like the rest of the zombies are coming to it on the side and so it kills the zombies Okay, so what you're saying I, is I should leave. I don't know first, if they're zombies, but ice. and then let you have the turn to have the next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think like that, right? I, and I probably okay. convey that to you like in character, right? Like, perhaps the ship's yeah, the ship is doomed. Perhaps we can use it for at least one last hurrah. Uh, so in death, its duty can end. Uh, you know, meaning that I'm going to okay. put it up in a big old boom. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and spend one, spend the spend a glory to. How do I to delete take it? it up? There we go. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to spend the glory to take my turn. Let me see. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Um, I believe as an action, see. you can um, sprint, which is W movement, if you're not going to do anything else. Um, Actually, no, it's uh, three times. According to the quick reference. Well, what I want to do actually is move over to this the um, deceased over my brother Harad and see if I can analyze it with my Medicaid skill. The sashimi. Determine what it is. <laughs> At this point. Yeah, the sashimi yeah. on the ground. 
So that would be, um, I know that there's an action I can take to move double, and it wouldn't use my movement. Yeah, that is uh, running, I believe. There's running, and then they're sprinting. Right. So I would just run over there and then um, do that check. Okay. Uh, uh, so let's up here. see. Go ahead and roll me, uh, because it is in pieces, go ahead and roll me a difficulty of five Medicaid. So there is a chance, but it's not very likely. <laughs> Hi, Amber. I think How I'm gonna doing? think I'm gonna push that uh, that glory back. So we're up next. What you learn is that these things used to be human, you know, average run of the mill human. And that uh, something obscene is animating them. Now, I don't mean obscene as in perhaps chaos related, but obscene as in some form of technology, something almost electro stimulating their muscles. Because you're looking at maybe a, a severed arm through the, through the middle and you see that there's some form of metal that has been grafted onto the bones of these things. Hmm. So, and I'm assuming I would know about Tech Priest, but would I know about the Dark Mechanicus? That Heretics? I'm thinking no. Okay. So it seems technological in nature, y'all. <laughs> it's not chaos yet. Well, well they die. <clears throat> so just up keep next. your eyes open. Um, up next. next would be the, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the creatures. Uh, now, I do have a rather important question to ask is, what is everybody's speed? Well, let me put it this way. Does anybody have a speed less than five? No. Nope. No. I think I'm the slowest. I have a speed of five. Okay. So in that case, let's resolve this in a narrative fashion because there's no way. Well, there is a way for them to basically run and catch you guys. Um, but I don't think there's merit in playing that out um, because I think Krant's idea of blowing them up is way cooler and way more cinematic. So let's do it this way. Uh, as you all are exiting the craft, uh, Krantz, why don't you describe how this lander is uh, bathed in the Emperor's light, as it were? Right. Uh, so I think there's that point where we're like, you know, move. I have, I have an idea. We're going to use this as an explosive. Okay, cut off I the rest of them. Toss her the las pistol so she's not trying to ignite stuff with a bolt gun. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll use your las pistol. Um, thank you for your arms. Uh, and then I will turn around at the, the proper distance away. Uh, fire the las pistol, I guess, like inside at the console. Mm -hmm. uh hitting the um the fuel leaking out and um i guess at that point probably the uh for lack of a better term frozen zombies are um kind of like crawling over the thing or like kind of like on the wings at that point and then it goes and we just Ooh. see sort of like that shadowy silhouette of like just the bodies getting completely evaporated by the uh, uh jet fuel mm -hmm. or um and then they're not frozen zombies yeah <laughs> Uh, they oh, yeah. are oh, no, what's it called? Uh, what's 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 fuel called in here? It's not Ethereum. Promethium. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Promethium fire. Uh, right. No, they're Im immolated. Yeah. Right. And I probably have a quip or something to say at that point, right? Um, something about uh, you know, purity through fire and flame, or something as a as a prayer. Mm -hmm. So completely out of character. Yes. Uh, I thought it would have, been, would have been super cool if you took his last pistol and instead of shooting it, you set it to overheat and threw it like a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been actually pretty funny. <laughs> like, I mean, you if you want to retcon it. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'll just shoot it in there. Right. Jocka just looks at yeah, the wreckage like... and just says, I told you it was dead. Your service pistol. So I give it back to him. Thank you. Can I interject and throw some humanity into this? What was his name? Pilot. <laughs> his, his, his name was extra one 
He was a loyal servant of the emperor, and in that service, he had everything he needed. I'm just going to sigh and look around, see if there's any shelter. Yeah, and we that's... all have as you, yeah, I mean, we all have as something about a death, right? Like as as glorious a death as as him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, now that you're not fighting for your life, uh, you take a look around at your surroundings, and you are seeing a blizzard and snow covered area of broken spires, broken buildings made out of metal and rock. Uh, the streets, such as they are, are wide and covered in the carcasses of broken vehicles, both walker, tread, and wheel alike. And you're even seeing signs of half-frozen bodies. Now, when I say half-frozen bodies, I don't mean half, maybe I should put it this way, frozen half-bodies, where, like, the torso down is what remains. And you're seeing them littered as if they are running out from the hive itself. And there's even a billboard because it's on the map and I want to add some extra flavor. You sort of look up to your left and you see a billboard and it says something along the lines of, Try the Emperor's Might today! Only three ninety nine. How cleanly are the bodies severed? I would say, Brother Harad, based on your power sword display, better than a power sword. And what that means in character for you, I leave to you to figure out. So yeah, Brother Harad is kneeling by one of these half corpses, uh, and he gets up and he picks, picks one up by the leg <clears throat> and brings it over to Torvian and says, um, these were severed too cleanly to be an explosion. Uh, this is very strange. Would you be able to take a look at this? I definitely can. Um, I'm not sure what exactly I'm looking at, though. I know that the <laughs> ones we fought before were technical. These these bisections oh. they're they're too they're too <laughs> accurate for for hive people. Are they cauterized? <laughs> Yes, in fact, uh, if you were to chip away at the ice on the top of the being, uh, you would find that they have been neatly bisected so that there's even a bit of spine remaining inside. Hmm. And and you said that the wounds are cauterized. Correct. Right. Okay. So these were cut by by either las fire or possibly power weapons or something with a lot of heat. Hmm. Well. My experience, this is too nice for even a power weapon, power sword, or any power sword that I've seen. Are there any upper halves? There are not. Just lower halves. So these things got hit by a very powerful beam that disintegrated the upper halves. Well, we don't see the upper halves. We could have taken them. Uh, how are the cuts? Are they like flat cuts? Are they mm -hmm. shaped? They are straight and, what is that, parallel with the ground. Doesn't look like there's signs of damage anywhere else besides the bodies. No, and that might be the strange thing, is that you're looking at the buildings, and there's no indications, other than obviously the wear and tear of the environment, that they were struck by really any weapons fire. It almost looks like just everybody was running from something, and then... The whole world froze over. And these people lost their heads. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start attached. muttering the prayer in the time of tumults. <laughs> um, Torvian, are you, uh, Torvian, if you would just uh, take a look at this, maybe using your medical expertise, and if you can try and determine what caused this type of wounding. I definitely can. All right, go ahead and roll me a uh, difficulty of, uh, let's say, five Medicaid, please. All right. So nice. I'm going to say with the success is you can confirm what Harad is saying is that it's too neat even for a power sword. And you can think of maybe one or two things that you've barely heard of that might be able to do that sort of thing. But that's on the level of, say, because I'm trying to get my things right here. 
uh, a melt a weapon might have been able to do this, or a plasma weapon, maybe on a very fringe case, might have been able to do this, but it's just way too clean. Like this is this doesn't sit right with you. All right. So what I'm seeing here, it's. It was done by a high precision something with a lot of heat. So something maybe like a melt a weapon, but since there's no damage to the surrounding buildings, I don't think it was. I I have no idea what it is. I think it's very hot. I think what you have learned already is telling enough that high energy, high precision, something we need to look out for. I continue chanting my prayer. Not to spoil this autopsy, but I think we should get inside before we freeze to death. And I think we should be on the lookout for uh, parts to repair this Vox unit. Can we identify what any of the buildings are? Uh, I would say that you maybe have a few buildings to pick from in your immediate area. Uh, the building with the billboard on it is actually like an old Earth style sort of or old Terra style uh, diner. So it's, you know, just a standard one story diner. Maybe has uh, things you could use there. Uh, that's on, we'll say, the left side of the screen, quote unquote. Uh, mm -hmm. As you approach more to the middle, uh, there is a office building spire of some sort. Maybe it goes about four or five stories tall. Then on the right side, you've got another office building. This one only about three stories tall. And then to the further right of that, there is an open parking lot with just an amalgamation of broken husks of vehicles. I believe we should go to the tallest building. That generally means more important and will more than likely potentially find some way to fix this box unit. Do any of the buildings have a vox caster on the on the roof that we can see, like a satellite or something? Not that, that you're imply. seeing. Okay. Imagine the snow makes the visibility pretty uh, pretty poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for those who can't see the screen. The visibility is like you can just make out the shapes of the buildings, but you can't make out the specifics of the buildings. Okay. Um then yeah, the tallest building would probably be a good place to start unless we want to see if there's any supplies in the diner. I doubt anyone would still be alive given these conditions above ground. If anyone's alive, they're probably below. No, I was, I was talking about survivors. I was talking about, you know, food. I don't think any food would still be good at this point. Fair enough. Let's go to the office building. All right. And as you all trek down to the office building, I tell you what, I think that is a perfect way to end our short little session zero. Leave a little bit of a cliffhanger. So uh, this is where I'm going to end the stream. Well, the recording of the test stream anyway. So uh, those of you watching this on YouTube, if you want to catch the rest of this adventure, we pick up this right where we left off next Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully this hour has been a little bit enlightening, hopefully a little bit fun, and uh, incentivizes you to tune in. Either way, see you later, stream.